Have you heard of biodynamic farming? Me neither, but that's about to change today. I'm at the Julique farm in the beautiful Adelaide Hills of South Australia and I'm going to take you on a little tour of the farm and then I'm going to have the privilege to talk to Cherie, the farm manager, to learn all about biodynamic farming practices. And you might be surprised, there's a couple of things here and there that we can apply to our houseplant journey as well. So, let's go! Hello, editing Jan over here. I figured there's a little bit of context missing. Unless, of course, you're watching my second channel. On there, I have a vlog up about the whole three-day trip to Adelaide. But if you're just watching this video first, you probably don't understand what's going on. So, let me give you a little bit of background. Julique, a well-known Australian skincare company, invited me to the Adelaide Hills to their farm as part of a launch event for their new product range, Herbal Recovery. They didn't just invite me. There were lots of people People there, a mix of influencers, bloggers, editors for magazines and so on. I spent three days in Adelaide and the day before this particular video was filmed I actually had an exclusive tour of the whole farm uh, just by myself and we filmed a little bit with Julique for their social media. The video you're seeing today is actually a video that was filmed on the day of the launch event. So it wasn't an exclusive tour just for myself, it was a tour for everybody over there. So as a result of that we're not actually touring the whole farm, we're just touring like a little display garden that they've got over there for exactly that purpose. If you want to see the whole farm I highly recommend you check out my second channel. I vlogged the whole three day trip and there is a vlog for each day. So. Um, not sure if they've all been released by now, but check out my second channel, subscribe, put on the notification bell and so on if you're keen to learn more about my adventures. The video is going to start with a quick tour through the display garden and Cherie, the farm manager, is mainly going to focus on the ingredients that are used in the new herbal recovery range because, well, that's the whole reason why we are all there in the first place. Cherie is a wealth of knowledge and I was really excited to pull her aside and just have a bit of a chat to her about their biodynamic approach to farming because that's what's unique to Julique. Now, biodynamic farming was very new to me before this weekend but actually it wasn't it's just the terminology that was kind of new to me at the end of the day there was actually lots and lots of elements of biodynamic farming that i've already been doing or that i'm at least planning on doing in my indoor journey as well now one more little disclaimer a little bit of time passed between the tour and me having a chat with sheree and well in that time we participated in the launch event and as part of that we had a beautiful lunch with some boozy drinks. <laughs> it was also about 35 degrees and we were in the sun so those cocktails were hitting me a little bit too hard so, so I feel like my brain wasn't fully braining in the second part of this video but you know that usually makes it a little funnier. Well okay Enough disclaimer, the disclaimer is almost as long as the video by now. I hope you enjoyed the video and yeah, that's it. Bye. I must say, before we get really into it, a big thank you to the farm team. And they're inside hiding away, um, but they are the ones that do all of the hard work, okay? So just want to acknowledge them. Now around us is some really key ingredients. Roses. You, you should know Jalik and roses quite well. And we've been growing English roses since 1985. So let's just talk about maybe the history. Some of you might actually realize that Jalik's turning 40 next year. For a natural skincare company started in Australia, about 10 minutes from here, that's pretty amazing. And when we think about sustainability, we think about how we operate as businesses these days, Jalik has been doing it since day one. And English roses are great to soften and hydrate the skin. We have just harvested 1,600 kilos of rose petals this season to the point where I'm saying slow down, guys. So it's been an absolutely phenomenal season for roses. Nature is best, not a lab. And so what you're seeing around you is basically like one big pharmacy. And everything we do at Jalique is what we used to do many, many years ago and all of your ancestors would have been connected to this. What nature gives you is all your tinctures and tonics and medicine that we would have used all those years ago. What would you call it? witchcraft but what that is um you know that witchcraft is looking at nature to to address ailments it's to address your skin it's to address your inner health um so we're actually on 105 acres here it's quite a large property now 
and we produce about five to six ton of freshly picked botanicals, which is pretty unique. And thinking about 1500 roses, it's not just about roses. And Loic said that earlier, over 35 different botanicals we grow here. And this is one of the key ones. And it's, a, it's an interesting plant to see this time of year. You can see it's seed forming and it's a, quite a spectacular crop, but it's not what's going on at the top. It's actually what's happening underneath. It's a root crop called marshmallow root. Um, the root is actually a tap root and you break it apart and it starts oozing oozing this tackiness, it's mucilage, and that's what locks the hydration in your skin. Um, and it's dotted into almost everything we do, including the products we'll talk about today for active ingredients. It moisturizes the skin for 24 hours. Very conscious of the sun, even though I've got my bigger Kuba on. So let's keep moving down. I wanna show you lots of things in this little time frame we have. So we're a biodynamic farm. And there's a lot of people know about biodynamics and what it means. It means moon rhythms and cosmic influences and all those great tips, crystals, there's all sorts of things that go into it. But what it is, it's a rhythm of nature and connecting with the rhythms of what we're doing. A moon rhythm is actually the drawer of water. So the moon goes around the earth in an oval and moves away from us and comes back in. And moon rhythm planting has been known in gardening for many, many years. In fact, my grandparents used to do it with their tomato plants. I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Well, the moon's out, we've got to do it now. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's because when the moon's quite close to earth and it's a descending moon, water rises in the soil. And as the moon moves away from us, water drops. What, what's, the, uh, what, what's the root doing, Jan? It's following the water. Yeah. So that's what moon rhythm planting's all about. It's just a drawer of water. It's as simple as that. And guess what? <laughs> this thing here has a star sign. I'm a Gemini and I'm a flower. I'm an air sign. And so it's a great time when it's a descending moon and the water's quite high and it's an air sign, you plant a flower because it's connected to that. Do you want to know your star signs? Okay, you know your elements. Water signs a leaf, the fire signs the fruit and the seed and the earth signs the root of the plant. So we're all connected to nature. So that's what biodynamics is all about. It's building a, a relationship with your, your property, your pot, um, your little garden in the backyard, and just doing things thinking, really connecting to it. Instead of using your head, and I was speaking to Jan about this, you use your heart. You're connecting to what you're doing. You're thinking, what does that plant need? You're not just doing it for the sake of it. You're actually connecting with why you're doing things. I'm holding something pretty special. This is the Jerlik Rose. It grows on this property nowhere else in the world. We planted this rose in 2015 to celebrate our 30th birthday and it started going into skincare in 2019. What have we done? Just over, it's a weird number, 666 we've done. Uh, 666 kilos so far this season. It's got a quite unique scent. It's not about roses today, but I do have to show off the roses. So I'll pass it around and get you to smell and connect with that. It's quite an intense fragrance and it's been bred for the Australian conditions. We're standing underneath so much just here as well. You just had that beautiful uh, drink just earlier and elderflowers are above you. I won't get into it yet because I'm going to talk about it with the herbal recovery range, but I'll just talk about companion planting. This plant underneath here is called valerian. You can see by the sign. <laughs> valerian is actually only used in biodynamic farming. We throw it onto the compost and it helps to heat the compost up. Um, but it's also a great companion plant and a part of uh, biodynamics, organics, companion planting draws in good bugs to fight off bad bugs. So really bad bugs like aphids off your rose bushes, you want lots of ladybirds. Ladybirds eat the aphids. So you want the good stuff. That's called a good bug mix. Valerian's old school. And the reason why we don't plant it often anymore, it stinks a little bit, to be honest with you, but it is quite pretty. <laughs> we hand pick everything and we're really connected to what we do. So when we see a beautiful launch like this, the team gets so excited because they've been working on it for years. Um, so we're gonna now talk about the herbal recovery range. So we're gonna go around the corner here. So behind us is actually four of the key ingredients that go into the herbal recovery range. I will just talk about one I missed and sorry about that. And that's that pretty little orange flower that's dancing around behind me. That's Calandula officialis. Calandula is connected to marigolds, um, but Calandula is very different. It's a skin healer. It's great for healing skin, particularly for sunburn. How, how right for me to say that just now. Um, but also rosacea is great for that. Um, it's wonderful for dermatitis, for eczema, for psoriasis. So it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a powerful plant actually. And we've just done 350 kilos. I want to show you how technical the job is here. This is how we pick. 
There we go. Okay. <laughs> and we use apple picking bags and we put all the petals in the apple picking bags and then we go up to the drying shed and lay down all the, all the different petals, which is quite unique. Um, so Calandra is also in the herbal recovery range, um, but really what I want to talk about is this hero extraction. So we actually combine four key ingredients, extract it, and it's called the recovery blend. And behind you is everything you want. So in the sky is elderflowers. We actually picked them from the garden that went into your champagne glass earlier. Elderflowers um, are wonderful for soothing the skin. It is also connected to a bit of alcohol. Um, ever heard of Sambuca? <laughs> I'm a 90s girl, I heard of Sambuca. <laughs> so it's called Sambuca Snagra and uh, it's in the alcoholic drink. It's also elderflower is in gin and tonics these days. That's what everyone's connected to. And if you don't pick the flower, it turns into a berry elderberry wine. So it is a bit of a powerful plant that one um, for soothing the skin. It's got great antioxidants as well. Now um, the next plant, now I'm telling you the stuff we've always grown, okay? Elderflowers has been around for close to 40 years. The other one is Echinacea. Most people don't see it live though if you're not connected to your garden. So what a spectacular beautiful crop. Um, you would know it maybe as purple coneflower, that's also what it's called. Most people are connected to Echinacea because it helps fight off your common colds. So really powerful antioxidant. Um, again, it's actually a smoother for the skin. So we've got soothing and smoothing, which is pretty cool. And uh, we only harvest the flower tops that goes into the recovery blend. Now, then we've got a very hidden little baby iris root back here, Iris Florentina. So we call it Iris Oris root here because we're actually harvesting the actual um, the root of the plant. It's actually quite nourishing for your skin. Um, now, famously, it's known for as the base ingredient for your fancy perfumes. It's got a beautiful base note, and as you smell the herbal recovery blend, um, that's actually coming through that particular blend as well, which is quite unique. And then, last but not least, um, so we've got. Roses, the queen of the botanicals. And then we've got holy basil, the queen of the herbs. So this is it here, this bad boy. <laughs> so holy basil is holy. It's a sacred plant in India. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a holy basil because of how many powerful punches it has to, to your stresses. It's, it's actually known as a really potent aptogen. You might have heard that key word in skincare, aptogen. What does it actually mean? It means to adapt. It helps you adapt to stress. That's what holy basil does. You might know it as Tulsi. Tulsi tea. It's very good for inflammation and muscle joint pain as well. It's anti-everything. Antioxidant. Uh, antioxidant. Um, it's a bit anti-aging, of course. Antimicrobial uh, and antifungal. So it is a pretty powerful plant. We've never grown it before. It's been grown for this blend. So it took us a while to, to really get into what we wanted to do. So remember, we did that two years ago. Okay, we did a whole crop over three, 400 kilos. I can't remember the figure precisely. Cutting it and harvesting that all in those picking bags, laying it on the drying racks, drying it, extracting it, and then turning it into exceptional natural skincare on a global scale, which is pretty unique. So that's highlighting the recovery blend, elderflowers, Oris root, holy basil, and echinacea. <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks, Marie. You look different. <laughs> yeah, I look a bit different, and it's a bit strange wearing a kubo with a dress. No, but... <laughs> I like it. It suits you. Now, we, yeah. we just had really nice lunch. Mm. Um, we've some of the ingredients from your farm, um, yeah. but I really appreciate getting a little bit of private time with you because I need to learn more about your biodynamic farm. Um, can you? Can you explain to us first in like the easiest way possible? <laughs> My goodness, it can get a little bit confusing. Yeah. And it's a, it's a really pretty word, but actually mm. what does it mean? Exactly. And I think it's about personally, one, you have to have a personal connection with biodynamics, mm -hmm. okay? So everyone's gonna have a little different spin on it. My personal connection on it, and I did talk to about this a little bit earlier, but it's about farming with your heart as opposed to farming with your head. So you're actually having a real deep connection with your property. Yeah. Like I've got a big one here. Um, but also, um, even a pot, 
yeah. like yourself, right? And you're kind of thinking about what you're doing. You're kind of looking at the plant. You're thinking, mm, do I do this? Do I do that? And you do it with feeling and meaning. I actually really like what you just said earlier. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah. was one of the part that <clears throat> really stood out to me yeah. in your initial yeah, tour chat, as well. Yeah. The, um, you know, growing with your heart, not your brain. Yeah. Because that really resonates with me. And I think that's probably something that's applicable to most people watching as well. Yeah. It's like, we are building this sort of connection, mm. but we, do, we just build it with house plans yeah. we don't have the luxury of yeah. having a biodynamic farm available to us but it doesn't take a biodynamic farm to do no to at least experience elements of biodynamic farming you can yeah. like uh, uh, you're basically saying i do it yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> i mean yeah. you know you do things with yeah. thought and meaning you're thinking about that plant right yeah yeah, yeah. i always say sorry I, I can't give you a 10-step guide on exactly how to grow your plant because i don't know your plant i don't know your conditions i don't know your environment yeah. i don't know the history of that plant how long you've had it for yeah. and, and so on um but I know that about my plants. Correct. But yeah. I don't know that, like, it's hard for me to verbalize that sometimes and give very concrete advice. Yeah. Because I suppose I actually grow with my heart, not my yeah. head yeah. all the time. The other thing about biodynamic yeah. farming and what makes Jalik so special and so unique is, um, like, we put more into the soil than we mm -hmm. take. So it, it's actually all about the soil. The other thing is, now these beautiful roses behind us, they look magnificent. They do look If good. you went really close to them, they might have some blemishes on them. Yeah. So we're actually plucking the petals and we're drying them for skincare so we're not cutting them for a vase yeah so what do we not use no pesticides no chemicals we don't have anything nasty on the property because that's going to transfer onto your skin of course so the yeah. way we farm we're actually thinking consciously about the team and hard work they've got to do but we're actually thinking about at the end result what's actually going to go into our skincare because it's going to affect your skin so we're thinking about the end consumer literally as we're weeding the plants so let's talk about that a little bit as well because yeah, sure. i i haven't quite mastered completely getting rid of all chemicals in my houseplant, houseplant journey. Mm. Every now and then I need to uh, use some chemicals to get rid of some specifically spider mites. Yeah. Thrips is what mm. we're dealing with mm, indoors. Mm, mm. Um, but I would love to completely go chemical mm, free. Mm. Um, I know a lot of indoor growers use um, beneficial bugs. Yeah. I, I still haven't really quite figured out how I feel about releasing bugs in my living room either. <laughs> What's yeah. your approach well, to this? Well, uh, that's yeah. exactly what we do. Yeah. So we, we do beneficial releases okay. um, quite often throughout the year, depending. And spider mite is mm -hmm. definitely something that we get on our mints uh, okay. in particular. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we use interesting things. So black spot on your roses. Okay, maybe not the best indoor plant, but <laughs> definitely doing it right, right here. So the black spot you get on the leaf, full cream milk. Oh. So it's some really strange things oh, you okay, can yeah. use. Um, and again, we're not looking for absolute precision, um, but we want it clean. Yep. So, um, yeah, so definitely with the peppermint, we get some rust. We might use some sulfur spray. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it's a bit different when it's inside. So it is tricky. Um, so sometimes it's about just cutting the plant back, getting a, a rid of the affected material and starting again, as opposed to trying to keep on top of it and try to rejuvenate that yes. part of the plant. Just like, you know what, that one's done. Let's move on. I actually do that quite a yeah. lot. And I really love that because I think that is something everybody can do. No matter yeah. how many plants you've got, if you have a farm, indoors, outdoors, garden, greenhouse, if there's a leaf and it's infected by pests, yeah. sometimes I just feel like it's not worth the battle. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm actually just potentially kind of making it worse. It. Yeah, you're exactly. just chasing the bugs So sometimes I'm like, you know yeah. what? Let's just cut it mm -hmm. and start fresh because yep. it's actually going to be faster yep. to start fresh yep. than that continuous downwards spiral and, kind and of thing. thinking about in. isolating that plant yeah. from other plants that might be yeah. susceptible to, to something that you might be seeing. So we do the same thing here, yep. right? So we cut the material back. Um, we might go a bit further and then we kind of isolate that part and then we go, all right, that might, we might get rid of that. The other cool thing is we put all of that back into the compost. Mm. So we're thinking so. about all the parts of the plant, what's going back into the soil. So if there's this effective material, you go, dang, but it's going to go back in the compost anyway. So that great ecosystem, that, that circular system is actually wonderful. It's part of uh, regenerative agriculture. Yep. We talk about permaculture. There's all these like really kind of cool, you know, names and things. Yep. Biodynamics is the essence of that as well. Okay. But it is that sense of feeling and real deep connection to what you're doing. Yeah. Now, I'm not completely giving up on the topic of pests just yet. I have one more question okay. because I know that you guys do companion planting. We so do. you we Because do. you spoke about it in, yeah. that, uh, in, in the tour earlier. Mm. Um, 
and quite interesting i think it probably plays in with the beneficial bugs if yeah. i'm connecting the dots yeah. here so yeah. correct me if i'm yeah. wrong often when people use beneficial bugs inside they're actually saying oh you need to do it in a really closed environment so that the bugs don't escape mm. right because if you release ladybugs well they're going to be gone by tomorrow so they're not actually end up eating your aphids they actually just end up flying away yeah um, <laughs> so how do you make sure that when you release your yeah. beneficial bugs that yeah. they're actually... Well, they're on those companion plants that they love, right? Yeah, so, okay, um, so those are the dots yeah. I was... Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, so yeah. I did make the correct connection. Yeah, yeah, you're perfect. all over it. We talked about holy basil before. Yeah. So obviously I'm in a dress because we're having a beautiful brand yep. event today, right? <laughs> so not my normal um, get up. Um, but holy basil is actually a companion plant to roses as well. Okay. So we've actually got them. You see a little blue ribbon maybe just behind us yeah um, and that blue ribbon, the there's a, there is a small little holy basil plant as a marker plant so we're actually looking for any aphid pressure um, and some pest pressure you actually see that in vineyards it's the opposite for vineyards they set, they actually have roses as their marker oh. plant against their um, vines so they can see any pests and diseases because they're more susceptible so it's actually quite interesting like you can use other plants to kind yeah. of dictate other things and there might be a bit of a, a sucker plant in your house that you're like it's going to get just... everything i'm gonna i was about to say yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love that you say it. Uh, you call them marker plant. I call them sacrificial plant. Yeah, look, we've all got our own little way of saying <laughs> exactly. It. Yeah. So I always say it's like you know, where all of my really precious plants are, the ones I really don't, <laughs> don't want to die. Sometimes I just put like a little sacrificial alocasia there because alocasias seem to be yes. specifically spider mite magnets. That's the one yeah, I'm yeah. struggling with. Mm. Um, and I'm just like, you know, just eat the alocasia and leave my yeah, other plants alone. So It's like the canary in the uh, the cave. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It sounds up. terrible. It sounds terrible. Don't do that anymore. But, you know, it's just you understanding. Yeah. No, it's just understanding um, that plants can do so many different things for you. So yes. it's, really, it's really quite cool once you get into it. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. I think, no I mean, that was very nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> I acknowledge that was a bit of nerdy talk. But when I first heard about biodynamics i was like oh my god do i now need to watch the moon you yeah, know to yeah, be yeah, to be yeah. which um it actually also makes total sense with yes. the moon and the moon phases yes, and what yes, you yes. explained and yes. how it draws the water mm -hmm. i mean we are also just made out of water mm. as well and we mm. can feel the impacts of yeah. the moon right so yeah. it makes sense that plants can as well but i didn't realize that certain elements of biodynamic farming are already incorporated into my indoor journey yeah i just call it differently or I might not be quite as professional at it as you are but i still appreciate the concepts and it's always interesting no matter who i talk to when yeah. they're planty people yes. and we like to talk about plants there's yes. always some sort of connection yes. and something that we can learn from each other Look, doubt that you can learn something from me that's not true but <laughs> that's not true i cannot tell you the amount of customers even visiting the farm and we do a little tour and we show mm. them what we do i'm always learning because all our ancestors have got the learnings there are books and books and books and books and there's not enough books written there's just so much to learn and it just takes so much time and that's the other thing with biodynamics it takes time Oh, right so this is my 11th season doing wow. biodynamics and i'm learning every year about something different so it is a long-term commitment um but it's worth it i'll tell you right now okay well, yeah. i gotta have one more question yeah, on sure. one. so if you've been doing it for 11 years that's me personally the okay. farm has yep. been actually we've been doing it 40 years next year 40 yes years. okay yes, yes well just from your personal yes. experience from the last 11 years mm. i'm sure you keep records and uh, i love a good number i love a good chart i, I love my all. statistics uh -huh. have you seen a significant increase in efficiency as a result of the biodynamic approach yeah um, kind of maturing a little bit on you and your yeah, team and the farm absolutely yeah. so i think one of the other things is one of the biggest things we spend money on is labor the amount of mm. effort it takes to go into something right because you hand pick everything that's hand what you said pick and hand yeah. weed oh yeah so there's a lot going oh, yeah. on back yeah. here so we do about six ton of fresh petal here on the property yearly um one of the things i was going to say in the last 11 years oh this is my 11th season i've seen the wettest in history Mm -hmm. and the driest in history mm. and this might be another dry season coming up so i've seen some challenges that we've never seen before these real um strange uh things that are going on in the climate it is real <laughs> um, but look uh, we're using less land for certain crops mm. so i'm actually thinking about how many plants how many people i need to pick them what's my yield um what's the density of the planting 
can we crowd them can we not mm -hmm. are they susceptible to this disease are they not so what time brings is maturity maturity for the team and some consistency in our methods so we're using less land and we're producing more than ever before nice so it's a uh, I, that's where I get my kicks. I absolutely love it. <laughs> yeah, got, got that extra ton this <laughs> yes, year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. But that's so good to hear for somebody who's been doing for such a long time that you're still learning, that it doesn't get boring, that mm -hmm. life throws different challenges mm -hmm. at you. And that's what I think draws me to this hobby of plants or it's, I think it's way surpassed hobby at this stage. I was going to say, I think it might be I a think, passion. Yeah, I think, I think it's definitely a passion because I am a person that gets easily bored and I was like, moving on. Mm -hmm. And I think with plants, I haven't found this moving on yet because I'm, I'm moving on, but within the realm of plants. Yeah. So I really appreciate yeah, talking to somebody yes. who does the same, but so differently. Mm. Um, and yeah, thanks for taking the time, time talking to me. I've absolutely loved it. Thank, Thank you. you. And next time when it's picking season, I have two hands. You're out here, baby. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Anytime. I also realized I never recorded an outro. Um, a lot happened on that day. You know, I'm new to all of this as well. So I wasn't as structured as I would have loved to be. But at the end of the day, the whole event wasn't about my channel and me creating a video. It was about their event and my participation in their panel and so on. So at some stage, I kind of just forgot to film. Oopsie. So this is the outro. I would really appreciate if you check out my second channel, which I'll link in the description as well as at the end screen. You can check my travel vlogs on there. And I would also appreciate if you give this particular video a thumbs up, leave a nice comment, and I hope I'll see you next time around. Bye. Oh, and because socializing and being around strangers brings out the craziness in me, here are some bloopers. Huh? I trust you, uh, love. Do you like the you shot? You can do that. That's it. <laughs> you did amazing! My arms were kind of, but the thing is, oh my god, No, you did amazing. Um, oh my god, you didn't rec. Just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, you didn't rec. Just kidding. Oh my god! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> that is about to change today. I'm at the Julique farm in. Where are we? Adelaide Hills. Adelaide Hills, that's the word, okay. Have you heard of. Hang on, is this on? Yes. Do I need to sit on it? I'm at the Julique farm in Adelaide, in the beautiful Adelaide Hills. Oh my god, everybody's watching me fail. Australia to learn more about biodynamic farming. Let's do it one more time, please. <laughs> Cut! Hey, my name is Jan, also known as Sydney. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I can't even know my own name if I'm struggling with that one. There's no hope. Biodynamic farming is not just about growing healthy crops. It's all about nurturing the land in line with the cosmos. <laughs> I say that word so weird, no? Or is that how it's supposed to be pronounced? Biodynamic farming isn't just about sustainable agriculture, it's about fostering a deeper connection to the land and cosmos. <laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't not <laughs> laugh after the word biodynamic farming. Yeah, hang on. That's biodynamic farming. Every harvest is a celebration of what? Celebration <laughs> no, the, of the life force of nature. The life force of nature. I'm like nature force of life, something like that. Okay, <laughs> life force of nature, a celebration. Okay. Central to biodynamic farming, self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency, is that a word? In my head, the sentence is so easy. I just get nervous when you say action. Maybe don't say action. <laughs> no, I say action. <laughs> then I'm also nervous. <laughs> well, yo, maybe, can everybody look away? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I need to get used to it. It's a good learning curve. Sorry, guys. You just need to partake in my learning curve. <laughs> Central to this approach is self-sufficiency. Farmers create compost. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> do you do bloopers because I'm really good at those. <laughs> unlike traditional farming, unlike conventional farming which often relies on the... U <laughs> Crops are grown alongside each other creating a balanced ecosystem that naturally fights off pests and diseases. Nice. There we go.